Roll call. Not yet. <laughs> Roll call. Palermo. Here. Festerson. Here. Gray. Here. Harding. Here. Melton. Here. Pauls. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for remarks by Council Member Melton and perhaps an invocation. We'll see. I had actually, I had, I had called over the weekend and asked uh, Pastor Connie Bison from LifeGate Church to come join us here today to give an invocation and a prayer for the city. In light of the recommendations and the press conferences that we had yesterday, I did call her uh, this morning, texted her this morning, and said, hey, we're already over our 10 that we're supposed to have, so why don't we, we call it off? Um, however, I asked her for her prayers. And so what I'd like to do right now, I know that we had a National Day of Prayer on Sunday. Things keep changing by the hour. But what I'd like to do right now is just take five minutes. I'd ask God to bless our city, to bless all of our first responders, um, our doctors, our nurses, the people here in the city, um, I know our clerk, our chief of staff, in the mayor's office, who have really been working nonstop for the last week. We're in kind of uncharted territory. We've never really been here before. Um, but I want to thank all of the, the fine police officers, firefighters, and again, the medical professionals. And I'd ask God to just bless all of us, um, bless all of our families. And let's just pray that we get through this um, as safely as possible, with as little loss as possible. And I pray for those small business owners and the families that are facing um, financial hardship. Hopefully we can all pull together and do what's right, because I do believe in the city of Omaha, and I hope God um, will bless us today and moving forward. Thank you. Amen. Amen. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining this meeting of the Omaha City Council. Uh, it's a courtesy to those in attendance, and in order to uh, facilitate the conduct of our business, we ask that you turn off or silence all electronic devices. Uh, I would also just say we're we're well under the, the 50 person limit that is the official limit at present. Um, we will be monitoring that and I would encourage all those in attendance, if you have an exhibit that you wish to make a part of the record, that you deposit that on the table next to the clerk to maintain a safe distance for our clerk staff. Uh, and also consider maintaining at least six feet between each of you so that you have the safe distancing. Madam Clerk. Item six, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for Sanctuary Ridge, along with waivers to sections 5399 sidewalks and 5382G streets, located northwest of West Center Road and 222nd Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on item six begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Dewan Hayes, 2608 Patrick Avenue. Um, I took a look at this particular item and I just had some questions. Um, the, I was looking on their website and it looks like a pretty good project. Um, though it's what was kind of concerning to me is the amount of waivers that are made, uh, recommended by city planning. Um, here you see a lot of significant waivers for the sidewalks, which I can understand to some point, but there's, um, it's, re City, co City Code recommends that we have um, one cul-de-sac, there's five. Um, there, it, there is recommendation that there only be 20, up to 25% of the tree canopy removed. This is thir there's 31%. Um, and really, when I see this, I wonder, who is this a sanctuary for? Um, $450,000 to a million dollar homes on the very edge of Omaha at Elkhorn River. Um, here, we often have folks coming to city council really begging, pleading for advocating on affordable housing. And here, and I understand this is a private developer choosing to, to do their own thing, but it's really important that um, 
as as a city council and as a city, we're we're establishing what our precedent is and what we value. And honestly, when more and more of these projects on the further reaches of our of our outer boundaries are being proposed and passed and given waivers and more and more waivers, what do we have a code for? What do we have a, a, a what do we have any of these safeguards for if there isn't a deliberate effort to um, to protect them? Um, particularly, I'm, I'm very interested on, uh, into this because it's on the Elkhorn River. It's our, our other water boundary. We can't move beyond it. Um, and um, Omaha means the people who move against the current. It, our name literally comes from water. The Omaha tribe name comes from water. <clears throat> and I think we tend to forget that um, here uh, because more and more are we giving easements and waivers and a precedent to to developers that I can't afford to live in this four hundred fifty thousand dollar to million dollar house. Yet there are people living in Omaha Housing Authority buildings right now just up the street who have rodents, rats, mold, mildew, cockroaches. I'm literally trying to help a woman move today to get out of her place. So you have one it, minute remaining. Yes, I understand. So so um, I understand that a lot of many of these pots have been sold already and that this is something that's just going to happen. Um, but I, I literally could not sit well on my conscience by knowing that this was taking place with all of the waivers and easements that are being given um, when people are literally don't have places to live right now. And amidst all of the virus and everything, there are really major pressing concerns, and it requires us to come back to our environment. So um, thank you. Are there any other opponents? Public hearing is closed. Council Member Harding, you're recognized. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. I won't address all the waivers that were um, included in this. And, and I will say, though, that our director's not here um, at the request to keep the tenants down. But I do know that at the um, at planning board, there were questions um, about some of these things. One of the reasons for some of the waivers was actually to uh, preserve some of the natural environment um, where this project is occurring. So I don't think there were any waivers that were out of the, the ordinary and what were, were to help make it a better project. I'll move for approval. Second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item six is approved, seven to zero. Items 7 to 8 relate to the same project and can be considered together for Vistancia, located northwest of 210th and 4th Streets. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 7, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat. Item 8, a resolution to approve a waiver to the present development zone specifications of the urban development element of the City of Omaha Master Plan for this property. The public hearing on items 7 and 8 begin at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Items 7 and 8 are approved 7 to 0. Items 9 to 11 relate to the same project and can be considered together for an Atarjan farm located at 6550 Rainwood Road. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 9 is a resolution to approve the preliminary plat. Item 10, a resolution to approve the final plat. Item 11, a resolution to approve a special use permit to allow development in the ED North Hills Environmental Overlay District. Public hearing on items 9 through 11 begin at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Items 9 through 11 are approved 7 to 0. Item 12, a resolution to approve the Pacific Heights Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Plan located at 1217 and 1219 Pacific Street in an amount up to $267,122. The public hearing on item 12 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 12 is approved 7 to 0. 
items thirteen through fifteen relate to the same project and can be considered together for property located at seven zero eight north one hundred twentieth street planning board and planning department recommend approval and i'm thirteen a resolution to approve a special use permit to allow construction sales and service in a c c district item fourteen a resolution to approve a major amendment to the large project special use permit item fifteen an ordinance to amend the boundaries of the a c i four overlay district to incorporate this property into that district the public hearing on items 13 through 15 begin at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Milton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Items 13 through 15 are approved 7 to 0. Before we call the liquor agenda, I would inform the public that we advise the clerk to inform the liquor applicants that uh, we would be waiving the rule that requires them to appear. So I entertain a motion to suspend the rules for items 16 through 19. So moved. Second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Madam Clerk. Item 16, an application to consider a Class I liquor license for Candlelight Lounge located at 5031 Grover Street. The public hearing on item 16 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the council. My name is Sean Kelly, 2804 South 87th Avenue. Here today just to respond to the opposition letters sent to the city clerk. Um, first one, referring to the connotation of the initials of this LLC. That's actually the initials of the owners. So there's no mischievous uh, subliminal note there with what those initials are it's just their actual initials and then secondly um, as to any nuisance to the neighborhood this was an establishment that existed for two decades was sold that owner did have some problems which we acknowledge but uh, our client who we're representing here today um, has seven different licenses in iowa nebraska has a very good record um, and secondly one of the part owners is actually lives right down the street she'll be um, the manager on site and her kids actually go to the local neighborhood school. She's a member of the parish as well. So if there's anybody that has the best interest of the neighborhood in mind, I think it's this ownership group. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Please come forward. State your name, your address, and the basis for your opposition. Uh, Mary Newjar, 3632 South 51st Street. Um, I'm opposed to this because of the amount of garbage and um, there's all kinds of things going on in that parking lot at night. I live right under 500 feet from there and um, we can't open our windows. There's tons of little kids that play up and down that street. We've had lemonade stands where people come by, speeding cars, and they'll cat call at these kids and the amount of garbage out there. Um, there's used condoms. I walk my dogs every day, and there's used condoms. There's broken glass. There's crack pipes. There's all kinds of things there um, and until all, all hours of the night. Um, it used to be a nice restaurant, and then all of a sudden, in the last few years, there's just it just has gotten huge with the amount of people there. You can't go to the grocery store. There's nowhere to park. Um, people have had their fences knocked down from people back, from drunk drivers backing into it. Um, the children can't go even walk to the store anymore, which is in that same mini mall. Um, it goes on till about six in the morning sometimes on the weekends, and then it starts again around two or whenever the bar opens up. Um, there's been clothing all over the place there. It's just not a, a safe place for us to live anymore. It didn't feel like to me, and I know a couple of the other people have also said that. So, I would like to see something done if they're gonna if they're gonna have that there. I would like it, it to be more of a restaurant. Uh, bar and restaurant so that the families can go back there like it used to be and um, maybe put up a boundary or a barrier of some kind maybe some trees a, a hedge anything maybe signage that says you know no trespassing or something like that because it's just it's not safe Mary and just so the record is correct um, for the Liquor Control Commission when they consider this uh, license recommendation that we'll make here in a little in a little bit the the old operation closed right yeah, a couple of years ago, somebody but somebody else bought it. Right, and it's closed presently. Right. And so, what you're referring to in the record and your concerns arise of out of how that prior operator used the place, and you don't want to see that happen again. Right. Okay. Right. Thank we, you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other opponents? 
the public hearing is closed. Council Member Pauls. I, I just want to make it uh, clear, this is a new owner. Correct, Sean Kelly, 2804 uh, 87th Avenue. Yes, that's correct. Okay, because we have had problems in the past with the uh, owner of this bar. In fact, he owed the city thousands of dollars of unpaid occupation taxes. So, but this, I just want to make it clear, uh, because that was, a, had a good reputation a number of years ago, but the last few years it is, Sure. Reputation has gone down. Yeah, and, and the applicant doesn't dispute any of those problems. As I mentioned, one of the owners actually lives right there in the neighborhood. Um, this location will be modeled off uh, a different location that this ownership group has. And in that instance, 75% of their sales are food, 25% are drinks. So I, I think to her comments, this will actually go back to the, not the prior, but the, the second previous owner and, and be a good addition to the neighborhood. I will admit, I have been in that place during the daytime, and it's really pretty nice inside. Surprised me uh, how much they've updated the inside, interior of that place. So, so, but I think the, the attraction, the type of individuals they are attracting in the evening was the issue. Uh, I think that's right. And I'm assuming the new owners know better, especially if you have one of them living in the neighborhood. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, Council Member Pauls. Vice President Palermo, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. And I just want to make it a comment as well. I want to thank Mary for being here, obviously, on St. Patrick's Day with everything that's going on. And also, I know it's your anniversary, so happy anniversary. Um, the uh, questions or the comments that you had, uh, they are what we all dealt with with the old candlelight. Um, so when I did see this coming up on the agenda, obviously, uh, I did my due diligence and I, I walked around to the neighborhood to some of the neighbors that you know as well and asked them questions about it. And uh, I, I was very happy to hear that they were excited uh, that the uh, old ownership group is gone. And now that we have a new ownership group, it's what the neighborhood needs. We, we need another family type sports bar atmosphere. And I think it will uh, help a lot with some of the problems you had with the litter and maybe some of the uh, after hours uh, nuisances that were uh, going on because I know they had also stressed uh, OPD with some of the actions they had to take with gas stations nearby that had to close uh, for uh, things that were going on. So uh, I, I will motion to approve this and I just want to reassure you that, uh, like I stated earlier, if you have any problems, definitely uh, give me a call. I'm looking forward to this new establishment. Uh, operating and uh, fill in that uh, hole we had in that strip mall. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Vice, Vice President Palermo. And before we call uh, the roll call, I just echo this is on the boundary of d d districts three and four, so I'll be keeping my eyes on the place too. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 16 is approved seven to zero. Item 17, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for Bar 80, located at 8033 Blondo Street. The public hearing on Item 17 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Oh, oh, we have an opponent. Uh, Joel Ockrey, uh, 935 North 146 Circle. <clears throat> It's not my birthday nor my anniversary, just for the record. Uh, so I've got, I, uh, uh, my son owns a house on 79th and Manor, which is within the 500 foot barrier. It's about a half a block south of uh, Blondo. <clears throat> anyway, owned it for a couple of years. I've spent time with him in the evening, just uh, improving the property. Neighbor right next door. It, it was a pre foreclosure house, so kind of a tough situation. <clears throat> Neighbor right next door had a similar um, house that was ready to go. He's improved it. Neighbor on the other side, similar situations, been an abandoned house for years. Anyway, the, the uh, neighborhood's improving. Been there in the evening, um, helping make improvements and, and have heard gunshots. Uh, there's an apartment complex right in that, right across the street, I believe, on Blondo, 79th or 80th, right in that area. <clears throat> so, even without adding another bar, um, you know, I've heard gunshots, I've heard yelling in the evening, I've heard plenty of other things. Uh, my son 
it says there's homeless people that walk through the, uh, it's right on Cole Creek and under the underpass, under Blondo and so forth. So anyway, just here to state my opposition. Thank you. Are there any other opponents? The public hearing is closed. Council Member Festerson, you're recognized. Thanks, Mr. President, and I appreciate that testimony. This is my district, and I do agree it is a sensitive area, uh, especially with some of the issues that you've cited and uh, some issues we have had across the street there in those apartment complexes. The council may remember we um, voted against an application on the corner there, uh, which was a, essentially a convenience smart and gas station that would have had off-sale package uh, for some of these reasons. And, and, and for um, those reasons, the Liquor Commission uh, backed us up, and that has since been, through, I think, through the court system and resolved in our favor. Um, I see this one a little differently, though. I think it's a business inside the strip mall there. Um, and what I would commit to you is that I will follow up with this owner, who's not here today, obviously, for, for reasons of uh, the rules of this meeting, uh, to talk to him about his operation and make sure he is sensitive to uh, our concerns as he begins his business there. Um, but I think I see this as different than um, the convenience and offsite package uh, model that was clearly the model at, on the corner there um, at about, uh, also at about 80th. Um, so with that, uh, motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Item 17 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 18, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for Blue Chip Ultra Lounge located at 14805 West Maple Road. The public hearing on item 18 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 18 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 19, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for wine, beer, and spirits located at 3435 Oakview Drive. The public hearing on item 19 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Can we have a motion to reinstate the rules? Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Consent agenda. Any member of the City Council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the City Council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the City Council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items 20 through 34 are today. If you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or opponent. The public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 35, a resolution to approve a one-year extension in the agreement with E.B. Jacobs, LLC, with the anticipated cost of testing for 2020 being $224,258, A's communications and opposition. What's the pleasure of the council? The public hearing was held March 10. Council Vice President Palermo, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, and I uh, would like to call up. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank the council for laying this over, it did give me a chance to uh, talk to a few different groups and uh, have one today here that I'd like to call up. It hasn't changed uh, the way I've thought about this. Obviously, there were some underlying issues that ha have changed due to the, the recent COVID-19, but I think overall um, the will of the council is what it is. So at this time, I'd like to, I guess, call uh, Director up first. Would you like to go? Deb Sam. Deb Sander, Human Resources Director for the City. Okay. Did you have something you wanted to add other than what we heard last week? Uh, no. Just here to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, President Connor from the Police Association. You are recognized for being right, here today. Good afternoon. Sergeant Anthony Connor with the Omaha Police Association. Uh, President, 
Our address is 13445 Cryer Avenue in Omaha, Nebraska, 68144. I'm also here with our uh, esteemed counsel, Joseph P. Nats, who's here, who wrote the letter that you guys all saw. Um, in addition to uh, any of the discussions from last week, I wasn't here because I wasn't aware it was going to be a big topic that was going to be discussed. But our biggest concerns about EB Jacobs or, or any company that is um, assessing our promotional process here in Omaha, our main concern is in the past we've had where the same company that was assessing our promotional um, candidates here, our command here, were allowed to go and assess in those other cities for that same company, but for the, in the other cities. Our only question, our only concern would be that there is either an HR rule or something in RFP that re restricts that uh, type of um, perceived advantage for um, the, for that group of, uh, for that person's friends or whatever else that they may come back with, with inside information on how that company operates. I don't know if that's confusing or makes sense to you guys, but that's our biggest concern. Um, and I'm here to answer any questions if anybody have any. Thank you. None? Okay, all right, thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I appreciate that, and uh, I will yield the floor at this time. Council Member Gray, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I would be supportive of this, of, of this uh, uh, resolution, provided that, as we talked about last week, um, Deb, that we use that list, the, the list for uh, uh, individuals that are applying to become police officers, that, you, that list is normally, we have it a year, you go before the personnel board for an additional year. Um, my suggestion and my thought is that that list, if, if there are some concerns, as some have suggested, uh, that that list be only used for that one year and that we, you know, uh, do another testing for, you know, for uh, future officers that might want to be on the force. Yes. Um, that would be, and, and I know there's been a motion in the second, would that be okay with the, the motion or the, the person making the motion in the second to it, include having that list for just one year? If, there, Sanders, it, if there's no objections to it, is, is what I hear you're saying. Is, yes. Am I correct in that? Yes. Yes, so it, we would um, uh, provide the diversity numbers uh, to the um, diversity committee from the Omaha Police Department, and we would seek their approval on whether or not they would allow us to uh, or would like us to extend the list for a year or to terminate that list at the end of the year and then retest. Okay. We would seek their input on that. Yes. that I'm okay with that. Okay. So I don't, I don't think we need anything in addition okay. because that's what you're doing. Okay. Correct? Yes. Okay. okay good. That, Thank that you. That was my understanding. Thank you. That's what. That's what. I, that's that's what, that was my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. And then, uh, Ms. Sander, I just had a question um, in terms of this committee or, or your willingness to meet. Um, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm, I'm misstating anything, that it was the previous practice when these promotional opportunities came about that there would be, um, with past command leadership within OPD, the uh, defer to this committee f from the consultant who would then score and rate the applicants. But the current process involves someone from your office and the chief. And I was wondering if, if that is in fact correct and is that what other cities are doing for best practices. And that all depends on the, the level of the test. For the deputy chief's test, that there was a training and experience evaluation that was done and it was scored by the chief of police and members of the city um, HR department, which is very similar to what happens in other positions across the city. Um, Austin Rouser's position is uh, open. That's a process that we would follow for um, to fill his particular position because of, of the high level of that. Um, that is not the case for other promotional positions. It's because All it's right. a police management job versus a police bargaining job, and the processes are different. But in previous OPD chiefs, and I can recall one, I believe, who did that the same for both, and I'm not suggesting that there's any cronyism or buddy-buddy stuff going on here. I'm just saying to avoid the appearance or the possibility that there may be, why would we have different criterion for how they're scored? Uh, the criteria for, um, it's, it's in the CBA, um, it's spelled out how things will happen. 
there's not that same level of language for police management positions. So their CBA so they have, is silent as to that. Correct. Okay. And so there's more um, okay. ability to to um, uh, have a different test or, or testing. Um, that it's not the same in both is what I'm trying to say. Well, um, are you aware of what other cities of Omaha size or bigger are, are doing for command position and senior management positions for best practices? Not specifically, no. Um, I do know that it does range. It depends on the um, on the you know jurisdiction and how they want to do testing. I know a number of jurisdictions use outside sources like EBJ Jacobs or IO Solutions, um, and and it's just. Um, because it's uh, you know someone else is providing all of the detail for that particular test. Um, unfortunately, when we have a deputy chief position open, we really only have one subject matter expert that we can call in, um, and um, just so that there's no disparate advantage, um, we might reach out to you know other deputy chiefs to get their input. But um, the final call would be that of the chief of police. Okay. Well, um, and again, I, I'm not saying that that's what's happening. I just, when you have a, a system that is um, susceptible to that type of um, even subconscious bias, you know, let's just say you and I were in the same police class together and, you know, and my, my name was Sanders and we sat next to each other, you Sander than me, and we rose up the ranks together, you became the chief and then lo and behold I'm applying and, and so is you know Palermo, but he wasn't in our class. He did, he didn't come through the ranks like us. You may be a great quality chief without any conscious bias, but it, you know if we're in this thing together and you're scoring them, that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Is you know maybe I have an advantage that you don't even know that I. Or, or, or can recognize that I do. Yes, that's possibly, that possibility exists, yes. Right, thank you. <laughs> uh, we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Palermo. No. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to one. Item 36, an ordinance vacating a portion of Pacific Street east of 6th Street, Planning Board and Planning Department, recommend approval. <laughs> The public hearing on item 36 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Hi, Jeff McGregor, 11750 Stonegate Circle, uh, here on behalf of the developer, McGregor Interest Inc., uh, here to answer any questions that you might have about the project. Thank you. Going next to the new house on the corner? Actually, we, we've got the self-storage facility right next to it, and so the intent would be to vacate Pacific Street, and we'd be removing one of the buildings and then installing a, a three-story uh, climate-controlled building in its oh, place. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. I think it's just public hearing. So will we need to move the final reading to April 21? Correct. So is that a part of your motion? Well, can, we, can we move to pass it today? Can we waive the third reading? I'd like to so, move okay. to waive the third reading. So your motion is to waive the third reading and to approve? Or do we need to you would have to, If you votes. wish to go with that, yep. If you wish to go that route, you would have to take a vote to waive the third reading, which is a supermajority vote, and then you'd vote on the item. I will make a motion to waive the third reading and vote today. Okay. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Council Member Harding? Um, I, I'll just, I wanted to state for the record, I, I will go along with this. And, and the reason um, for the waiver, obviously, I think is because of the, the current situation with the COVID-19. So normally I would not um, be a, a supporter of waiving um, hearing so that we can pass things without um, a justifiable reason. I think we have a justified reason in this case, uh, so I will be supportive of waiving the third reading on this. But I, I also wanted to say that this is not our normal procedure. Uh, we normally wouldn't be doing these type of things to rush things through for no reason. Thank you, Councilmember Harding. I concur. Um, 
No further lights. Uh, roll call on the motion to waive the third reading. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Is there now an underlying motion? Yeah. yeah. Well, motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Oh, I was here. Oh, I don't care. I don't Palermo. Care. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 37, an ordinance approving a cost participation agreement with Creighton University for improvements to North 24th Street from Cumming Street to Chicago Street in the amount of $3,893,857. Before we open up the public hearing on item 37, we have Director Stubbe who's made a special effort to get here today. Did you have something you wish to say? Yes, Bob Stubbe, Public Works. I, I do have uh, a request similar to the last request. I'm also here for any uh, questions, but since this uh, third reading was scheduled for next Tuesday uh, to give assurance to Creighton University of your support for the project and this agreement, I would request that you give consideration to waiving the third reading and vote on it today. Thank you. We'll open up the public hearing at this time. Are there any proponents who wish to be heard? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Council Member Harding, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Just for the record, same reason for the, uh, I'll be supportive of waiving the third reading if that happens. And if you just stepped in or tuning in, what Council Member Harding had uh, reminded everyone is this, this is not the Council's normal practice or preference, um, but because of the special circumstances going on with our public health crisis, we're taking limited action today on a couple of items to waive the third reading, having held the public hearing already. We had a motion. Whatever. Roll call on the motion to waive the third reading. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. There's a motion and second on item 37. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Do you need to read up the non-action items before the a motion is made, Madam Clerk? I do not. Um, is there a motion to lay over uh, all items appearing on the remainder of the agenda, 38 through 46, to April 21? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a motion to withdraw them? The, count, the clerk will reintroduce them in time for the next year. Is there a motion to withdraw items 38 through 46? It's been seconded. No further lights. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 48, an emergency ordinance to allow full-time employees up to 80 hours of paid administrative leave and part-time and seasonal employees a prorated amount in order to protect the employees from unnecessary hardship as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. Public hearing on item 48. No public hearing. No, just no. vote. Okay. It's just a vote. We have a light, though. Do can call lights. Sure. Council Member Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. I just wanted to express my support for this item. I do think, you know, the city and the county and the state are coordinating well in our initial response to this public health crisis, and our health care providers are too. I've uh, been very impressed with how they're coming together to serve our community and first, first responders for sure. I think now, though, we're getting into a territory where employers and philanthropy um, need to help us coordinate with response too when we have situations like the city does, when we have employees who are now either out of work or maybe hourly uh, because some facilities have closed. Uh, certainly we have bars and restaurants that are starting to feel this impact or unemployment concerns. Um, families with kids out of school um, that are in need, um, sometimes for food, basic needs. I would note that yesterday at the West Side Public Schools uh, served 12,000 families in my district at Westside, uh, Westbrook Elementary School, a very impressive um, outpouring of support for these needs. And that's how I view this item. I think that um, the city of Omaha is doing the right thing by offering what would be up to 80 hours of paid administrative leave to both full-time and part-time employees between March and July. Uh, and frankly, I would be open to doing more than that should the need occur and should that, should that need arise and continue as we get into this um, situation. and and decide how best to handle it. Um, there is no statutory limit in terms of 80, 80 hours that we're offering here today. So that's something I would consider in the future too. But I do think this is the right thing to do for now as we figure out how to handle this step by step. 
and make sure our employees are taken care of. So I would motion to approve. Thank you. And while we're not required because of an emergency ordinance to have a public hearing, I will exercise my discretion to recognize anyone who wishes, who came here today to comment either as a proponent or opponent. Seeing none, uh, there's a motion and a second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Pesterson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Milton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 49. There is no, again, required public hearing on this item, and there's no lights. Is there a motion? motion. Council Member Melton, you're recognized. Thank you, and I know people are here. What I, I just wanted to say that uh, this emergency, the, the mayor can only pass an emergency for 72 hours. So what we're passing this for is to allow um, the mayor's um, uh, emergency declaration or proclamation uh, to extend for a period of eight weeks. Otherwise, we would, she could only do 72 hours at a time. So that's simply what this is doing is allowing that state of emergency to extend for a period of eight weeks. And I, I actually want to do a shout out of thanks to the mayor, her staff, um, you know, Carrie and, and her staff who have been working um, almost full time, I mean, over the weekend, in the evenings as things change by the hour. And again, as I recognized before, our first responders that are, are putting themselves out there, not taking vacations, making sure that they're available um, for, for the public. So I'm very comfortable in, in voting yes for this at this time and do want to extend some thanks to all of those on third floor who are working hard too. Thank you, Council Member Melton. Council Member Festerson, you're recognized. Thanks, Mr. President. I agree with those comments too, and I agree with this uh, emergency procedure we're adopting today. Um, I think a lot of folks don't know what this means, though, and I think it was very clear yesterday this doesn't mean anything yet. Uh, we aren't taking any of these measures yet. It really provides the ability to um, proceed um, to uh, pursue these measures should they be needed, as determined by the mayor. I think in cooperation with the council. Some of these things as outlined in city code are, are quite uh, extensive. Um, it talks about limiting the number of persons who can congregate. It talks about a potential curfew. It talks about the ability to, to close lounges and taverns and bars and restaurants. It even mentions gas and the prohibition of weapons or firearms. And maybe lastly, and most extensively, it says to do any and all things and take such measures as are necessary to preserve the health, safety, and property of the citizens of this community. So very broad emergency powers here that we're adopting and allowing, but I want to assure folks that I don't think anything's, anything's happening yet, and should anything be pursued, I'm sure it'll be done in cooperation with the city council, uh, the county board, the governor's office, and everyone else too. So um, that's, that's why I support what we're doing here today. Thank you, Council Member Festerson. Council Member Harding. Thanks. Um, I think that the, the last thing that uh, Mr. Festerson just, just read to on, on that ordinance is a um, is, is demonstration of that. I mean, all those powers and all those um, can be enacted with, within that 72 hour period. And again, what we're doing is um, so that we don't have to have a special meeting or reconvene is to give the, the mayor the authority um, to have that for up to the eight week period that we're talking about. But one of the other things that I think is quite interesting about this is that I think the citizens of Omaha are seeing the nimbleness of, of local government working for them. Um, as, as quickly as things have been changing over the past couple weeks, I think you see the cooperative effort of the, the mayor's office, the county board, Department of Health, all the governmental agencies um, who have been willing to sit down with calm heads and figure out good paths to take as we address an issue that is un, un we've never seen anything like this before. But again, I think that the cooperation, the nimbleness, um, I, I applaud the the, uh, the third floor and, and the mayor's administration uh, for their efforts and know that the citizens should be comfortable uh, with that understanding, knowing that that will be the process as we continue navigating through these choppy waters. Thank you, Council Member Harding. Council Member Pauls, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. 
I have a couple of my constituents really question this, and I'm glad that it has been explained further by uh, some of the council members. But I find it quite interesting. Uh, even what the mayor established yesterday, the governor changed. So it goes to, it's a power structure. Uh, so you, we need to take a look at the governor, governor is doing and, and the president, because there is a power structure there. <clears throat> uh, because just by the making an edict, that does many things happen. So I think we all ought to be aware of what life's all about. I notice we're thanking a lot of the people in the government are doing all the good things, which I agree with totally. I'm glad I did not have some of those responsibilities because it probably kept me up at night. But also we need to think about those people, their lives that are being disrupted, those people who do not have that regular salary coming in, I think we really need to be concerned about that. And it was mentioned a little bit ago about uh, the West Side School s System, how they are helping people. There are a lot of good people out there and a lot of, of our nonprofits are doing some exceptional things. We ought, to rec we ought to praise them as much as we praise ourselves. Uh, we need government leadership, but we need the people to, uh, uh, we just need to be thankful for what they are doing and how they are accepting some of these things. I know those of you who have friends who are in the bar business or in the restaurant business, this is really a stressful thing for them. And seeing how they are, for the most part, are reacting to it in a very positive way. So it's, it, this is sort of like that circle. We all need to be working together. And I do appreciate what uh, our mayor, the governor, and the president, what they are trying to do for us. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Pauls. Vice President Palermo, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to add as well, with all the things that is going on, I want to thank uh, our president here and my colleagues as well. I mean, as people see us, they see us uh, sitting here brave, obviously, uh, we're taking some uh, precautions that we need to, but a few weeks ago at my invocation, I said, we're on the edge of a pandemic. Well, we're not on the edge anymore. It's, it's here in our face. So we have to take those necessary precautions, right? I mean, we have to resort to items like this, uh, not just for us, but it's for the most vulnerable. It's for the elderly. Because uh, if you're at my house and, and you have a house full of kids, somebody always has a runny nose uh, from Thanksgiving to Easter. That's just kind of the, the norm. But what we have here with this unknown, it's something that we've never seen. So I would like to thank the mayor, uh, the governor for his actions, but uh, not to leave out the council and my colleagues here for a big thanks for uh, showing up today uh, and conducting business as we're supposed to and as we're elected to do. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Vice President Palermo. I would just let the public know and rest assured that even though today marks the a hit pause button on our public meetings as a city council, where we plan, as we sit here today at this hour, to reconvene on April 21 for our next meeting, our staff has been tasked to work with the Douglas County Board and the Building Commission and our Building Commission members to uh, navigate a path to allow, if needed, the ability to meet electronically and to uh, allow public participation and media participation in that process, should it become necessary. The clerk has been working on these things already, and I look forward to our staff and the county board staff and our building commission members uh, working together to make that happen should we need to do it so that your government will continue to work for you as we need to continue the business of the city. Uh, having said that, I want to extend a personal note of thanks to the mayor for her grace and courage and perseverance and stamina at this time of, of uh, difficult, difficult and stressful issues. Our Douglas County Public Health Department Director, Dr. Adi Poor, and her entire team, particularly the epidemiology team who is working literally around the clock, and the governor and his staff. But most of all, on a local level, I want to thank my colleagues here for your in incredible patience and insights and sharing your thoughts so as we as a team can work through this together. So thank you. Is there a motion? We already have it. We have Roll a motion. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Item 49 is approved, 7 to 0. Adjournment. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. 
Melton. Yes. Falls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Meeting is adjourned at 249.